There we go. Now we're all set up. So let's get started. Um, great to meet each of you individually. My name is Glenn Hilton. I'm the President and CEO of ImageX Media. We're based in Vancouver, Canada. And happy to be down here in Irvine enjoying the beautiful weather that you folks are, are experiencing here. We get pretty nice weather too. We've been lucking out this summer with uh, three months of straight sun. But I understand you folks have been going through a bit of a drought yes. in the last little while. How long has that been going on for? Wow. Where are the water sources? Yeah. Hmm. Well, hopefully some, some uh, rain will come up from our way soon to, to drop on you folks. So um, Twitter, my Twitter handle is Glenn Hilton if you want to tweet. The, the content for this, most of the content is taken from manager-tools.com. It's a great podcast series. They've got five to 700 different podcasts on management. Mark and Mike are the two guys, and I listen to them pretty much every morning on my uh, commute into work. And uh, the content on this particular session has been super helpful in my company to be able to help us be more effective in running our meetings. So I want to share a little bit about that, and then I also want to open it up for you folks to be able to contribute and add content to things that have been useful and helpful as you've been running meetings at your different organizations. <clears throat> so first question I have, why do meetings get a bad rap? What would you guys have to say on that end? Here's a few tweets just to give you some primer, but what are some of the things that come to mind when you think of meetings and why they would get a bad rap? Doing something other than the work, yeah, it really helps uh, when you don't have the meetings because you can be more productive. Yeah. If you're not, you're not really sure why you're there. Hmm. Without a purpose. How can you contribute? Yeah. Okay. Others. How about yourself? What do you think, Sylvia? Sorry, you already contributed, Sylvia. But how about yourself, Edith? But you observe a lot of other people having yeah, the meetings. I see a lot of people that come and just goes back to back meetings and when they come out, they're not, I guess I can say they're not as happy as they were before they walk into the meeting. Yeah, sometimes meetings can be draining. Yeah. So I did a little bit of a assessment and analysis of my own company. I pulled out the calculator and I just sat down and I thought, how much does it cost me to have a meeting for my entire company to get together for one hour? So I wasn't too happy when I actually started putting together the results on that. Um, unfortunately, it would cost me one MacBook Pro uh, 11 inch and one MacBook Air at 11 inch, sorry, the 13 inch MacBook Pro and an 11 inch MacBook Air, or 2,561 packs of nibs. Cherry nibs are my favorite, and that's a lot of packages of nibs. So I want to make sure that that meeting is good. So unfortunately, when they aren't, they can be extremely costly for the company. But meetings that are well run can help focus and motivate your team and can help them become much more productive. So meetings are good, but they're not good when they aren't productive. They're not good when they can potentially derail the progress that you're making in your organization because they demotivate people. So we're going to talk today a little bit about what can we do to make sure our meetings are effective and how do we go about running them that way. How many of you use Twitter? How many of you have tweeted before? A few of you? How many of you have written a tweet and you get to that point where it's like, oh my gosh, I only have 140 characters and I can't quite squeeze what I want to say into that 140 characters. Can't they just give me a few more characters? Like maybe just five more and that'd be perfect and then I'd be able to get this tweet off, right? Why do you think Twitter doesn't allow that? Keeps it short and sweet and to the point, right? That's the secret of Twitter, is if it's stuck within 140 characters and you have to squeeze your thoughts down, that means when you're looking at your stream, you're not going to all of a sudden see just longer and longer and longer posts. So people like Twitter because it's just bite-sized chunks, right? So in today's world where there's just this huge fire hose of information that's hitting us from every aspect and angle, we want to be able to sift through things and see succinct, quick thoughts. That's why Twitter is so popular. But 
even if you were to squeeze all your tweets into 140 characters, that doesn't mean they're going to get read, right? Most people on Twitter are looking for three things, either to be engaged, to be entertained, or to be educated. So if your, your followers are following your stream and it's not doing one of those three things, they're probably going to unfollow you rather quickly or just subjugate you off into some non-list somewhere. So to be able to reach those people, you got to make sure you're targeting them well and you're delivering what they're looking for, right? So I find meetings are very similar. Meetings that don't have a purpose, that don't, aren't meeting the needs of the intended audience, are going to cause people to shut off. How many times have you been in a meeting before where you've looked around and you've seen people sitting there with their smart devices underneath the table, right? They're just kind of looking down, periodically they're sending out texts, they're checking out Facebook, they're updating statuses, da 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 da, right? How many sessions have you sat in where people have got their notebooks or laptops open and they're not taking notes, right? They're off looking at a whole bunch of other different things while that session or meeting is going on. And in today's realm where there's so much distraction, a meeting has to be very focused to be able to be effective. That's why meetings have to be short and succinct and you kind of almost have to think like Twitter when you're planning your meeting. Like how can we get things succinctly pushed out in terms of content, fast and snappy and engaging to keep all of these people with me here? Because if I don't, they're going to be off in la-la line really fast because our entire society today is attention deficit, right? We just don't have the attention to to, to really focus on any one thing for long. There's just too many other options out there for us. We have all of these devices now to pull us away. So we're going to talk about how can we run effective meetings that are going to help engage our people and help fulfill the purposes that we have. So here's a number of things. Prep before the meeting, pre-publish agendas and assign roles, start on time, set ground rules, review the agenda, fix responsibilities, stick to the agenda, summarize, finish on time, and document notes and assign tasks. Let's start with the first one. Proper prep for all meetings. So the first thing I do at the start of my week is I actually book time to create my agendas. Because if I don't actually book that time into my calendar, I'll find I'm gonna quickly run out of time. So I'll put a, um, a block of time, usually Friday afternoon, where I'm planning out my agendas for all the next week. Now, if I run out of time on a Friday, oftentimes I'm doing that on a Sunday. But I absolutely want to make sure I'm looking through every single meeting, and every meeting has an agenda in place. Otherwise, it's probably going to be a waste of a meeting. Book time to write the post-meeting summary. This is also super important. If I don't book time in my calendar to actually sit down and write that summary, and if I've got back-to-back -back meetings, I don't know if you've ever had this before, but all through your day, it's like you're running from one meeting to the next to the next. All the important stuff out of that meeting that you really need to document and you get down, you don't have to do time to do that because you're jumping into that next meeting. So I'll actually put it in my calendar. Next is give people adequate time to prep for their roles. So I'm coming from this from a standpoint of running a Drupal agency. So I understand how important some of my meetings are throughout the week. My meetings, for example, when I'm meeting with a client, I want to make sure we are really going to cut, uh, we're going to cut out all the stuff that is going to potentially um, damage our reputation with that client. I want to make sure everything we're going to be doing with that client is going to be well prepared and very polished. And I want every person in my company prepared to do their role. So in giving them adequate time to prep for those roles, I can't be just last minute saying, oh, we got a meeting. Uh, it's going to be in two hours with such and such client because they've probably already booked their schedule. So I'm going to let them know well in advance, here's what I expect of you at this meeting. I need you to review this estimate. I need you to be able to answer every single question that could potentially come up on this estimate in that meeting. And this is part of communicating clear expectations of what's required for each of them. And the final thing is doing a dry run. And this is something that you don't want to do for all your meetings because that's going to get really laborious. But for us, when we're doing like, let's say, a pre-sales meeting and we really need to nail it, and let's say we're up against five other firms to win a bid, we absolutely are doing a dry run. Every single person is going to be presenting in that dry run and we're going to be giving feedback to them so that when we hit that meeting, it's going to be bang on. Second in running effective meetings, pre-publish your agenda 
and assign you roles. So one of the first things I do is ask myself the question, what's the desired outcome of this meeting? What do we want to come out of this meeting after we've met with these folks? Oftentimes it could be you want to make a decision. Maybe there's some key things that you need to delegate during that meeting and that you need people to walk away with. Maybe it's you need ownership from these people. Maybe there's a big problem that you need to solve and you need to get all of those people on board with that. What is that one thing that you want to come out of that meeting with? Put that down, make that clear, let everybody know what that is, and make sure other things don't derail that in the meeting. Because if you don't have that really clearly out in front of people, a lot of people will do what? They'll step in and start taking over the agenda, right? And as a facilitator of a meeting, when, when you're planning that meeting, you want to make sure those objectives are met and that everybody understands that. Otherwise, somebody who's a strong personality or a great storyteller or somebody who loves to hear themselves talk are going to be talking through a lot of that meeting and it's going to derail the goals that you had. So you need to get those goals out. Sometimes you need to get ownership around those goals too. So you have to ask questions like, um, what is it that you folks are wanting to accomplish in our meeting? Oftentimes we'll have to do this with clients because clients will sometimes derail us on our meeting agenda. And we'll have a, a plan in place of what we're wanting to do. It's like, we have to deliver a website by this date. And then we work backwards from that. Here's all the things that we need from our clients. So in this meeting today, here's the things we need to cover with the client. But they're not thinking like that. They're coming into the meeting and they're thinking about this problem here that happened. And they want to talk about this. And sometimes you kind of have to shift your agenda over to talk about that, right? Because they're the client. But at the same time, you need to help them understand, here's what we need to accomplish today to be able to get to this. So sometimes you have to take that control, even though you know they're paying you. But by doing so, they feel like, okay, you've got the ship on track. We're going to stay on the rails, and this is going to end up with this good result. So we'll trust you. And that comes about because of your organization, your preparation, and your ability to take leadership and facilitate that meeting. <clears throat> when you're doing your prep too, and I find this for repeating meetings, it's often that things that we talked about in one meeting will need to be brought back up again at the next meeting because maybe they didn't get accomplished in that meeting. Maybe we need to revisit some of those items and make sure they get there. Maybe they got put in, the, in your parking lot. And so if we aren't keeping track of those, they can quickly fall out of place. And before you know it, two or three weeks later, you've forgotten all about those items and they're coming back up again. And then you're starting to waste time. So as the facilitator, the leader of the meeting, you've got to make sure you're keeping track of all of those. And I'm going to show you a system later of what we use uh, through a tool called Meeting Hero that's fantastic. So I love it and I use it every single day, but I'll show you in a little bit. Next one is an agenda. Here's a sample agenda for a meeting. So one of the things that Mike and Mark talk about at um, uh, Manager Tools is the importance of time boxing each aspect of the agenda. They say this is a real critical piece because if you just outline your agenda but don't time box it, you're going to get into challenges. So they actually put the, the time Besides each item, they don't put like an amount of time, like this item is getting five minutes and this item is getting ten minutes, but they actually put the time on the clock on that and then they assign a timekeeper. So if you arrived late in this meeting, we assigned a timekeeper at the starting of the meeting, but we actually put our agenda out for 40 minutes, so we're going to have an alarm going off later to make sure we have time for questions. But if you're running a meeting and you've got to cover multiple items, you'll want to time box every single one of those items and have a time on there and have a timekeeper assigned at the start of the meeting who's going to be saying, okay, we've got only two minutes left. Okay, we're down to uh, one minute. Okay, time is up. And then that time up point, it's like time to move on. We've got to move to the next item. Now, the challenge with this is if you're in client meetings, sometimes you don't want to be rude or cut off a client, especially if they're paying you, right? So how do you deal with that sort of issue? We can talk about that later when we get to the client uh, section of this um, agenda. But on the whole, this time boxing, I've found, tremendously helps to ensure that you can keep a meeting on track and accomplish all the things you want. It works a little bit like Twitter for you. It forces people to squish their thoughts down into that time section and you'll be amazed on how much more efficient they can be on articulating their thoughts.
Next is starting on time. This one's critical. We run so many meetings in our company, if we didn't start on time, if we waited for everybody to come along when they're ready, all of our meetings would start pushing back. How many of you experienced that before, when you just allow that to happen in your culture? Terrible, terrible. Do not let that happen. So I've actually set times in our meetings just a little off kilter. So instead of 9.30, it's 9.28. Team meeting every Monday morning, 9.28. Team uh, PM meeting every morning for Scrum stand up at 9.28. So at 9.28, we're in our boardroom, I'm in there, whoever's in there, we're starting right at 9.28. And bam, the door closes and we get rolling. Anybody who comes in late, we're not backtracking them to catch them up on the meeting. We've already started the meeting. We're saying, okay, we're starting. Sometimes you can do things just to make it a little bit fun to get them started. What we do is at 9.27, we kick off with Metallica, Enter Sandman, or ACDC Hell's Bells, or Highway to Hell that goes blasting through our entire company, and everybody instantly goes, oh, morning meeting, and they all come trucking on down, and there's energy, and we come into the room, and bam, we get started right at 9.28. And then 10 minutes later, the meeting's done. And as soon as that meeting is done, we're walking out, out the door, bam. So the next piece is, is setting ground rules. So you can't set ground rules necessarily in your client meetings with your clients. You definitely can internally to make sure you're effective in your internal meetings. So those ground rules are really based on you and your team coming up with those together. There has to be ownership around those rules. I know some companies that will have a ground rule, look through the fourth one down there, is no smartphones or laptops are allowed in a meeting. So they'll take them out, they'll put them on the table, they'll turn them over so they can't see them, and they all push them into the center of the table. Nobody's allowed to touch them for that entire meeting. Personally, in my company, I don't think we can pull that off because if there's a client catastrophe or anything that comes up, um, on any one of our projects in that hour during business hours that we're having that meeting that could be really bad so we don't personally practice that one but I do know some companies that do whatever the ground rules are you have to set them with your team to ensure that you guys are all on the same page about how you're gonna run your meetings and it could be some meetings have one set of rules and another meeting has another it really depends on the team and the focus that you have with that meeting next is reviewing your agenda so this really helps keep the meeting on track. If you start at the very start of the meeting before you jump into anything, say, look, folks, we're just going to go through the agenda. Walk through each of the items, reaffirm with everybody that, yep, that's exactly what it is that we're going to cover, and ask the question, is there anything else that we missed here? Typically, we'll have a parking lot most of our meetings. So if there is something that came up and they didn't get that through to us when we were sending the agenda out, and it's catching us off guard, and it could be something that could derail a meeting. Things here for a second. Let me just see what's going on. I'll come back in a moment. Um, what was I saying? Yes, yes. Then we'll just throw them in the parking lot and say, we've actually got time at the end of the meeting to cover anything that comes up, but we need to cover these particular agenda items. Next is fixing responsibilities. And this one I found to be super important. When we're going through a meeting and we come up with an action item, we have to ask the question, who's going to take this one? Okay, and when will you have that done? Okay, and what exactly are we going to do? And this is where I'll even stop the meeting at that point of time to make sure whoever's taking minutes, whoever's been assigned with that, is going to get that down and make sure that that's really clear. And when I show you the tool meeting here later, I'll show you exactly how we do that. And it's super effective because that is really the point of most of our meetings is to be able to put things into action that need to happen and decide on who's going to do it, what is going to get done, and when will it get done by. The next is sticking to our agenda. Again, this is where the minute keeper can help. A lot of times, if I'm running a meeting and I've got one or two other team members there, I've got the luxury of being able to assign roles. Hey, can you take minutes? Hey, can you be the timekeeper for me? I'll facilitate, and we spread the work out. What do you do when you're in a situation when it's just you and you're facilitating a meeting, let's say, with a client team, and you don't have those people to help you? What do you do then? Because you don't want to be sitting there facilitating a meeting, keeping track of time, trying to reflect back to show you're listening, taking minutes, it just slows everything down. Well, one of the things I do is I'll record the meeting. And I'll ask at the start of the meeting, hey, do you mind if I record the meeting? 
because I want to keep that agenda moving along and if I'm having to think about three or four different things at once, I'm going to drop a ball somewhere on that meeting. So that's what I'll do. I'll record it and then afterwards I'll go back over it and I'll let them know the purpose of recording it too is that I'm going to go back over it afterwards and I'm going to make sure I got accurate minutes throughout. But the timekeeper really helps you as your facilitator to stick to your agenda. The next is summarizing decisions and key action items. So we talked about the who, what, where, when. Well, at the end of the meeting, we find this is really key with our clients, is we go back over and we nail that down with them again. And they're super impressed when we do this because we're, they're like, wow, you caught everything that we asked and you've identified who's going to do it, when it will be done, and what exactly will be done. And you've got that to summarize with us at the end of the meeting. We feel like we got so much accomplished. This is fantastic. We're glad we made the decision to go with your company. So all of those things compute for them as we made the right choice. And that's exactly what you want to do. If you're a development agency or a design agency, you want to be able to give that sense to your client that you're very organized, your meetings are efficient and effective, and in the end, the results that they're looking for are going to happen. And that summary really helps in doing so. Additionally, in that summary, you want to be capturing everything that they said that is key. So if there was a key decision that was made, or if there was a key thing that they gave you in terms of feedback, the kind of things I'm looking for when I'm entering a, cl a client meeting, my PM, he's looking at it, and he's saying things like this. Budget, timeline, scope. I want to make sure I'm keeping them on track of that. I'm coming in with my account manager hat and I'm listening for things like, what are they saying behind their words? What is their pain? I'm going to listen for words that they say that remind me of that pain, like, I'm frustrated, I'm embarrassed. You know, those types of things are the things I'm keying in on that I want to hear because I want to also reflect that back as I'm summarizing. So, when your site does this and you end up being approached by X amount of faculty members who are coming up to you and saying, this isn't working, this is wrong, blah, 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 you feel really embarrassed. Okay, we're going to make sure we get that fixed and that doesn't ever happen again. And here's how we're going to do it. So then they're like, oh, you heard me. Fantastic, right? So you're looking at things both from here's the actions they want done and here's also what they're experiencing. And I'm going to make sure when I get to that summary, I'm going to capture all of that and I'm going to go through it and reflect it back and they're going to be going, you are awesome. So as soon as you reflect back and start to do that on a regular basis, whether it's at a pre-sales level or whether it's right in working with your clients, you're going to be hearing them saying words like exactly or perfect, right? And then you know you're hitting it. We're getting our screen popping in and out here. I don't know whether it's because of inactivity or what, but... Hopefully it will come back here shortly. There we go. Now we're back on. So again, finishing on time is super important. It really is important at the pre-sales level because oftentimes when you're dealing with somebody who's just sussing you out, they're looking at four or five different firms and they really want to be keeping their time on track. And so when I'm originally calling a contact, I'm saying, would you be available for a meeting so we can review your RFP with you? How much time would you have? Oh, I could probably give you half an hour. Fantastic. Half an hour. We heard half an hour, right? We're not going to take 45 minutes. We're not going to take an hour. They said half an hour. So when we start the meeting, we're there on time. We go through. We, we, we ask them the question at the start of the meeting. You mentioned you had half an hour. Does that still work for you? Yes. Great. We're getting close to the end of the meeting. Timekeeper's saying, we've got five minutes left. We're warning. We're saying we only got five minutes left. Here's the things we need to still get from you, we're reflecting back, we're doing the summary, bam, time is up, thank you so much. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask, we can follow up with another meeting, or they'll usually say things like, no, 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 let's just go a little bit longer, right? Okay, but we were respectful of their time and they really appreciate that. So when we're getting to the end of a meeting, we just say, meeting is up. When we're in an internal meeting, what I'll often do is I'll just stand up and say, okay, that's it, folks. Meeting's done. I walk out of the room, and off I go. Now, a few people will tend to be still in the conversation. A couple people will keep talking, but they'll get into the habit and used to the fact that, like, meetings start on time, meetings end on time. We leave when the meeting's done. And they start loving that. They're like, 
I like these meetings. They're not like dragging on and on and on. They're just done and we can get on to our next thing. And so it creates a great culture in your company when you can do that. Final point, document your notes and assign tasks. So this is super important because if you spent all that time and all that money and all that energy to get together and get all of these people interacting and collaborating, you want to make sure you get those things nailed down and they're really clear. So I was, this week, I had an extremely busy week. So Friday night, I was up till like 10 and Saturday I was working most of my morning capturing all of my meetings from the week and writing them down and sending out minutes through to uh, clients, to team members, I was documenting uh, personal meetings, HR meetings, putting them into our small improvements tool because all of those things are critical and important and I know that if I don't capture those things, it's going to come back and bite me and we're going to end up probably revisiting those things in a few weeks again and wasting a whole bunch of time. So I need those captured, I need those entered into the tool so that the action is going to happen with each of those items. So then I told you a little bit earlier, we're going to talk a little bit about successful client meetings. I've already covered a few of these points, but here's kind of a summary of some of them and plus a couple more. So first off, first impressions matter. Client meetings, if you have that very first meeting that is running super well, this is your, your, uh, your prospect meeting, uh, it's running super well, everybody's very well prepared, it's organized, you're doing all the things that we're talking about in terms of listening, capturing all of this information, follow through, you're going to probably get back, invited back to the table again because that's just so key and important. Second, knowing your audience. For us, it's uh, one of our solution architects oftentimes will take the time and due diligence to find out every single person who's going to be attending on a client side, researching them, LinkedIn, going to it. A lot of our clients are in the higher ed space, so we'll be uh, looking at uh, the website, uh, going and, and finding out about each person that's going to be in the meeting trying to find out as much information as possible around the agenda that the client has so that when we come into it, we have a very good knowledge of the needs that they have, what they're, they're looking for, and who they are. And that helps tremendously to make that first impression. Proper preparation, we've talked about energy and confidence. Super important in entering meetings. Nothing worse than having a facilitator that is just going on and on and dull and you're just falling asleep. Come in, be energetic, be confident. Even if you don't necessarily know all your subject matter, you need to have that, that level of confidence to make them feel like, yes, this person may not know everything about us, but they definitely know their realm, and I feel confident with them. Strong leadership, super important, especially if you have strong leaders that are on the client side who can quickly take over your meeting and derail your um, agenda. Being aware of potential fires. This is where I'll try to get my team giving me insight a lot of times when I'm stepping into a meeting because fires will derail your meeting faster than anything else. All of a sudden your entire agenda is thrown out the window and something can explode and blow up because one person on the other side is unhappy and they start venting out all of their thoughts loudly in that meeting and before you know it Everything you've been trying to do in building up you know, the chips with your client just got vacated. So if you can get that information ahead of time, oftentimes I'll reach out to that person in advance, talk to them, let them express out their concerns, and then I can be bringing some of those concerns right into the agenda so that that problem doesn't happen in a live meeting with multiple players. <clears throat> we talked about reflecting back and the importance of strong listening skills. Including a relational element is often help in, helpful. Sometimes it could be an icebreaker in a meeting. Sometimes it's just being able to talk at the start of a meeting, leaving time in your agenda to talk to people so that they feel like they're people and you're not just pushing through tasks and here's what has to happen. There's a personal element to it. And then maintaining that structure and efficiency. So before we go to questions, I want to move over and show you uh, this tool I was talking about, which is called Meeting Hero. So we're going to just pop over to that here. And so here's Meeting Hero. So you can see we have on the top uh, a nav bar that shows us meeting summaries, open issues, action items, and decisions. So you can see my live meetings that are coming up for this week here. 
And the cool thing about Meeting Hero is it's just a one-click um, login. It, it connects with your Google Calendar. So when you go to meetinghero.com, it will ask you, do you want to connect with your Google Calendar? You'll hit uh, that button, and it will uh, ask your calendar for permission. You'll give it permission, and after that, you're connected, and you don't need to connect again. And so it will read every meeting that you have in your Google cal Calendar and will populate your Meeting Hero for you. So what I love about it is, uh, like I said, at the start of the week, I'll go through and put a rough agenda in place for all my meetings for the week. And then at the start of each day, I'll get a, a reminder from Meeting Hero saying, here's your agenda of meetings for the day. So then at the start of my day, I'll just go through and I'll fill out these meetings a little bit more. Meeting Hero will automatically send an agenda to everybody on that um, Google Calendar list uh, 15 minutes in advance. So done automatically for me, which is great. So I'll show you really quickly. Here's some of the things that we've got here. We've got a team meeting that's on Monday. Um, I haven't filled an agenda, but I have put some private notes in place uh, in preparation for that agenda. I've got my um, client. I've got a client meeting here at 12. I've got a timesheet review meeting here at 2. And then I've got a one-on-one -on -one with one of my team members at 4. So I can pop in there and just quickly populate any one of those meetings. So let's just say we took the timesheet review meeting. I haven't put the agenda in place yet, but I'm going to outline. Here's the agenda items. I can put in decisions that we need to make and action items that happen or come out of the meeting while we're actually doing the meeting. Any open issues that are carried forward from a previous meeting and add in notes and private notes. The cool thing about it is everybody who is involved in the company and our clients can all access the agenda. So they'll just go to the same URL and they'll have it active. So it's live. We're all populating it together. So as we're going through the meeting, two or three of us can be contributing minutes and we can see those minutes going up there. And our clients can be actually watching and seeing those things up there. One of them commented to us on Thursday. She was like, oh, that's so great. I love how you captured that comment of what I said about such and such and put it right into the notes. So it's a great tool. I love it. It's very helpful to us and we can then go up and we can look at things like our summaries uh, of the meetings so we can go back and look at um, how each of those meetings went and how we summarized the, the different aspects of them. We can look at open issues. These are things that um, are still remaining to be acted upon which we can populate future uh, meetings with. Then we can look at action items. And so for action items I'll just do a quick search for my own name and see oh there's things that Glenn has to do uh, in that regard. So that's Meeting Hero and uh, now we're going to move over to our time for questions and comments and I think we're actually a little bit uh, ahead of schedule here. So what do you folks have uh, in regards to the content of the session today? Um, that's a really good question. I haven't um, investigated that but Google Calendar will typically pull in anything. Like I know if somebody sends me an iCal invite or an Outlook invite, it'll automatically go into my Google Calendar. So I think as long as you have a Google Calendar that's connecting with your other tools, it should work fine. Yeah. Right. So, how many people are involved in these meetings? Yeah. Is, um, is the, the team member's supervisor aware? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd, I'd encourage them to just like, talk about it with them in their one-on-one. -on -one. Like to just say, here's some of the observations I've had and here's some of the things that I think would help because it's, it's obvious that you're not really engaged with us at times. Uh, I'll have seen that happen previously with team members where um, they'll repeat a question five minutes later that was asked previously and you know immediately they're not engaged. I've had other team members before where a client will come to us and say, 
we don't feel like he's listening to us. We feel like he's working on something else. We can hear him typing. We don't think it's taking notes because he's not really paying attention. So I'll have brought that information back to a team member. When it comes from a client, they'll be just like, whoa, okay, bam, we're on track because we really don't want that to happen. So if we can frame it in a sense that they can understand it and see it, that, I mean, everybody wants to look at it from our perspective in, in regards to how does this help me? So if you can frame it in that sense with them so that they can kind of go, okay, that makes great sense. Manager Tools also has a really good session. They have a basics, which is free, but then their paid sessions are about 20 bucks a month. But their basics covers about, I think, 19 different sessions. One of them's on giving feedback. And I really encourage you to listen to that one. It's fantastic. So you can deliver feedback typically to somebody in 10 seconds as you're walking beside each other in the office. But the feedback could be something along the lines of, hey, when you show up late for meetings, uh, here's the results. Here's the things that happen in terms of uh, the impact on our team. What can you do about that? Right? So it's just really lightly asking the question, what can you do about that? And so a couple of pieces of feed like, feedback like that to a person can get them thinking about stuff. And if they're not responding to the feedback after they've said, yes, I will adjust and change in that realm, it's asking them like, hey, we've talked about this a few times. Um, and it, you said you were going to do this, but it hasn't happened. What can you do about that? So at that point, if it's not causing a change, it's like it needs to get escalated to your supervisor because it's impacting your overall productivity and you know, your, your meetings in general. It's affecting morale, right? Other input questions, comments around meetings. What have been some of the effective things that you folks have been doing to help make your meetings run better? Oh, okay. So at the end of every meeting, that's a really good point. There's a summary button. So you can choose all the people who are going to get the summary, and you just hit the button at the end of the meeting. So you basically, because you've been all capturing notes together, remember how I was talking about earlier planning in times afterwards to send you summaries? I don't even really need to do that anymore because we've got everything consolidated already by kind of a group session, putting those notes together. And so it's just a matter of me reviewing them, tweaking them, and hitting that button at the end of the meeting. So it's reduced the amount of time it takes for me to produce minutes drastically in my meetings. So I'll hit that button, it'll send it to my email, and then I'll have everything that took place in that meeting. Whether I can do a mass export or not, I'm not sure on that one. Meeting Hero is still a fairly new tool, it's in beta, and so there's quite a few new features that they're going to be bringing out, but I don't know on that particular question. Any other comments, questions, or things that you found that have been useful as you've been running meetings or involved in meetings? This is a fantastic tool. Yeah, I haven't had a single person in the company complain about it. It's just been so easy to adopt and to use, and it's just made the whole process a lot more collaborative. Yeah. What have been the, the biggest takeaways of today's session? Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Cool. Others? Edith? Yes. Yeah, I'll post the side slides and I will put a link through to our Twitter um, uh, hashtag, which is Drupal Camp LA. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. We hit it. That's great. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out, and I hope you have a, a great day and a great finish to your camp.